Well, welcome back to one of the Mallencam workshop session here. We are in Johnstown, Ontario, Canada. And we are in dome number two, which will be the home this evening here to show you how to do certain installation on a telescope. And here, what do I have is a Mead LX 850 on a giant, super giant field tripod. You don't find those anymore. That was made by Mead way back in the 90s. And of course, what we have here is a Mallinkam XT428 with the optical window. And what we have here is a Mallinkam VRC6. I just finished installing the uh, fo uh, the collimating ring for the focuser. I also just install one of those uh, pointer here, finder, electronic finder, which I really like. And uh, of course, we've got uh, one spacer here for the camera. And in my hand here, I have a MFR MFR five two. And I also have the 5mm spacer. You can see the multi coating here of uh, this uh, very fine focal reducer. And what we're going to do uh, while I'm holding the camera is screw the uh, focal reducer into the camera. I hope nothing's going to fall. Well, maybe I should uh, <clears throat> hold this. Oh, there you go. All right, now we're going to get it going properly. We are going to screw the. Okay, I got to hold the <laughs> video camera and I got to hold the camera and everything else, so hopefully nothing's going to fall. There you go. Now, if you pay attention here, the spacing between the brass ring and the 5 millimeter spacer, here we have a small little gap between the MFR5 and the 5 millimeter spacer. Nothing to worry about. The distance is correct nonetheless. Here's what I would like to show in this video here. Once you've connected all the wires at the back, here we have the BNC connector, 75 ohm true video signal going out. Here we have the S video going to the capture device and here is a cable to control the camera. Once you've connected that, you will apply the power. And in this case, I have the camera running. Now, where does those two wire goes? Well, this is the uh, composite, that's 75 ohm, and this is routed right through the mount here, wrapped around, and it comes to the center part of the telescope. So no matter where it pivots, the load of the cable always is the same. Instead of having the wires hanging in the back, we'll show you that in a minute. So we've got it wrapped here, and I've got the three wires coming down. Here's the Madeline Cam monitor. That was a prototype uh, back then, and it's will be in production at some time. It's a 12 inch. And here I have the capture device. Let me move this MFR3 out of the way. And we've got the capture device right here running. The green light is on, and it's connected here. And under, I have the USB to RS-232 and we are broadcasting live on the internet. Here's the adjustment for the video. Here's a color bar and this is a Lenovo ThinkPad 4 gig memory. It's a T510 solid state hard drive. Okay, now let's get back to the original idea of this video. Here is the 1.25 inch adapter, and now that we've got the MFR 5.2 with the 5 millimeter spacer installed, now bear with me folks, I gotta do this with one hand. How do we install all of this? It's very simple. Push the camera in gently. Here is the key, very important. This screw here is what's gonna hold the camera. Now, we could also put this anywhere we want, but as you can see, we got a little bit of movement. And this is where you're going to see vignetting in one area of your image because it's not sitting perfectly square with the optical tube. 
here's the importance of this video when you put the camera in see all the looseness we got pay attention to the brass part must come in full contact flat all right and you got to push on it and make sure you hold it in place firmly you got to push all the way in till the brass contact the 1.25 inch adapter and it is at this point that you will line up your camera properly have it centered properly and while you are holding it and pushed against the brass part you are ensuring to have type that up you are ensuring yourself to have a square alignment with the optical path and it's going to minimize your vignetting or coma on one side so here there's absolutely no gap between the brass part of the camera and the 1.25 inch adapter and of course i'm only using one screw and why is it at the bottom instead of having it on top or on the side it's simple if you type that up what's going to happen is as the camera sags on an angle like this while you screw it you are going to push the entire 1.25 inch adapter the camera against the upper part inside the 1.25 inch adapter and it's going to lay it flat that gives you a chance to push the camera into the focuser 1.25 inch adapter until the brass part meets perfectly flat and once it is have the screw at the bottom not on the side not at 10 o'clock not a two o'clock position but at the bottom you could also do the same by having the screw rotated on top here in this case because i have my two screws for the two inch adapter i choose to have this at the bottom and what you got to do is tighten that up you don't want to tighten it till it strips but you need to have a firm grip and once you've got that you've just reassured yourself to have the optical path will be squared with the CCD sensor entering into the camera and you're going to minimize the vignetting that you're going to have and some uh, coma that you may have and if you still have that that means you have too much reduction that means the five millimeter spacer is going to have to come off and you need to have a image live where minimal uh, vignetting will occur and especially coma this is something you want to watch and uh, it takes a little while to figure out do I need a five millimeter do I need a ten millimeter that all depends of the optical system here I got a five millimeter I should be okay on the six inch on the 16 inch I cannot use spacers it's a uh, it does simply does not work well at all I gotta go straight MFR 5 most of the time and however my friend's uh, 14 inch C14 from Celestron he could put two 10 millimeters in a five that's 25 and he still does not have any uh, vignetting he still does not have any coma so it all depends of the inside draw tube of the telescope itself if it's a smith caster grain and there are many other uh, uh, reasons as well which is involve optics uh, but once you've determined which spacer you're going to use uh, then the procedure is the same make sure you push the camera till the brass part is perfectly flush with the 1.25 inch input adapter of the telescope and this is your assurance that everything is nice there we go nothing moves at all and the key is to have this at the bottom or on top if you have the room to if the camera is on an angle as you screw it in it'll straighten it out because it's pushing onto the 1.25 inch adapter of the camera onto the draw tube inside perfectly flat then you get to push the camera in and tighten this up really really good and once you've got that the camera is going to be secured and will stay there for a long time unless if you don't have a dome you could take that apart every night and put it away but if the procedure is the same you're good to go here we get the camera on the cooler is on at the moment so the cooling has been activated because the yellow light is not on so it is not a warning light and uh, it's pretty well how we do it here um, 
Now we're going to continue testing and hopefully we'll have another video for you sometime soon to describe how to do things. I always have spare cables hanging as well. I've got my USB cable for uh, USB type cameras such as the Sky Raider which is in this brown box here. We're going to be testing that tonight again and of course we need some bug spray. And here we've got a two inch uh, RC focal reducer which we're going to be using a little bit later. We've got MFR 5s too. These are production unit. MFR 3. What I do once in a while, I go to the optical room at work and I grab one off the shelf to test its quality at random and I do this very very often. Here's another one there that was done a couple of months ago. Grab it and go. This one has an X on it for the exterminator and I test everything on a regular basis to ensure the quality is outstanding and this is what you get for result when you purchase a Malin cam accessory or a piece of equipment related to astronomical uh, use. Thank you very much for watching and now we're going to get on to stargazing and having some fun and we're going to join the party and on NSN uh, at the moment. Thank you very much for watching.